Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. This will be released right around the holidays, so a Merry Christmas to everyone tuning in. And back with us today is Mike Beck, investor and expert on the battery metal space. This is our third edition of our battery metal series where we'll be discussing nickel. Mike, welcome back to the program. Colin, thank you very much, and thanks again for hosting this session. Absolutely, and in our first two discussions, Mike, we touched on lithium and cobalt, two integral pieces to the battery narrative that's uh, developing here. Nickel, uh, as you've pointed out, is also a very necessary component, and you were one of the first people to uh, pick up on this months back, and uh, the nickel story is really developing in the marketplace. Can we start with just an overview of uh, the nickel market, why it's so important for batteries? Yeah, no, happy to. Um, electric vehicles really will be a game changer for the nickel market. Uh, till, till now, nickel's been a pretty humdrum metal commodity, and uh, global demand for nickel has largely been driven by stainless steel production, which uses um, both high-purity class 1 and also lower purity class two nickel. And in fact, I I saw a recent McKenzie report that talked uh, that had the title "Nickel: A Class Act," and I'll I'll explain um, why that's uh, particularly significant in the case of nickel because we I think we'll see a bifurcation of the nickel market into both class one and class two um, because one is suitable for batteries and one is not, but. Till now and historically, stainless steel really has accounted for something on the order of 70 or 75 percent of of uh, nickel demand. The nickel market itself is on the order of two million tons a year. Just um, to give you and you, your listeners a bit of uh, background, size-wise, that makes it um, a reasonably significant. Um, metals market. It's about 10 times volumetrically the size of the lithium market and about 20 times the size of the cobalt market. Um, And it's about 10% of the size of uh, big copper, which is uh, about 20 million tons a year versus 2 million tons. Of of the 2 million tons of current nickel mine supply, uh, about 50% is um, so-called class one nickel, which is the higher quality, um, more pure form of nickel units that are delivered by the mining industry. And the balance of 50% is class two nickel. The story with the nickel market the last decade has really been um, a story about the emergence of class two nickel as a as a growing component of the nickel market, its share of of total nickel units uh, the last ten years has gone from about twenty five percent to about half of the nickel market today. And the key driver has been increased demand from Chinese stainless steel producers seeking to reduce costs by using less expensive nickel units. Um, particularly um, sourced from something called NPI, which your users, listeners may have heard of, which is is an acronym for nickel pig iron, rather than traditional class one nickel. So increasingly, uh, particularly at the low end of the stainless steel grade range, um, producers, namely Chinese producers, have increasingly um, substituted class one nickel for what was previously class two nickel and this has grown the class one nickel from 25 percent of nickel units to 50 percent um, today now i think the big story on uh, nickel which makes it particularly interesting not immediately but as we move forward over the next 18 to 24 men 24 months is 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 electric vehicles and um, in particular a battery demand and its knock-on effect for nickel units. Um, if you look at a typical electric vehicle, let's say with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, 
it needs about 35 kilograms of nickel, which is quite a bit of nickel. And this this amount of nickel per EV or electric vehicle is likely to increase um, in in time as um, cathode battery makers um, migrate toward higher nickel chemistry. So the trend is, if anything, um, um, as as battery makers um, change their battery chemistry t- to include more nickel, which means higher energy density, uh, it's likely that nickel use per average EV is going to be above the assumed 25 kilograms of nickel per electric vehicle. The more nickel you can put in to a battery pack, the the better the performance. So this is an interesting trend. So what does this mean for the nickel market? Well, if you assume, <clears throat> which is not a particularly ambitious assumption, that electric vehicles represent, let's say, 15% of passenger vehicles by 2025, this implies incremental demand of something on the order of 600,000 tons per annum of class one nickel. And uh, that's a pretty big um, incremental demand against a uh, against current mine supply, which is a million tons a year of class one nickel. If you if you look at, for example, some consensus estimates for 2030, which have electric vehicles at 30 percent of the passenger vehicle market, then and you do the arithmetic of 35 kilograms per vehicle of nickel, um, you end up with an incremental demand for class one nickel in excess of 1 million tons per annum, which means that the mining industry is going to have to more than double its current um, mine supply of class one nickel in the next uh, 12 or 13 years. That's uh, that's a big ask, uh, particularly for a metal like nickel, which is perhaps the most capital-intensive um, metal and also has very long lead times um, for bringing on incremental capacity. Um, the lead time uh, to bring on a new nickel mine is conservatively on the order of six to eight years and um, usually fraught with technical challenges, particularly if it's a lateritic um, style deposit. An added challenge for the industry to, to deliver these sort of incremental units um, is that the preferred source of class one nickel is uh, high grade nickel sulfide deposits, but these are largely depleted and and represent only about 4% of known um, undeveloped resources. So for the mining industry to deliver um, and almost, uh, in fact, by 2030, more than double uh, the production of class one nickel units, this can only come from from much higher cost, lower grade nickel sulfide deposits and and also lateritic limonite deposits. Um, this is only going to happen if the nickel price goes much higher. The current nickel price is about eleven thousand five hundred dollars a ton. No, no um, nickel producer is going to invest the massive amounts of capital required to expand production, particularly f- for these um, lower grade sources of class one nickel, unless nickel prices go uh, well above twenty thousand dollars a ton. So, well, then in summary, while the nickel <coughs> Um, story is is a very interesting and compelling one. Um, it's it's not a story for today. It's it's sort of a story that I think will increasingly emerge um, from 2019 onward. At the moment, the nickel market is is more or less in balance. It's slightly in deficit, but there are enough above ground stockpiles to satisfy. But those stockpiles are anticipated to be exhausted by 2019 as electric vehicle penetration rates exceed um, um, the current levels, which is which is about 1%. So, so Colin, that, that's a, probably a lot to absorb in short order, but it, in summary, it's it's very compelling, the, the knock-on effect of electric vehicles on the nickel market. It's not a story um, 
that we're seeing manifested today as we do with lithium and cobalt, but it's I think it will increasingly become a thematic story um, from 2019 onward. Mike, your investment style that you've found significant success in is finding a sizable resource and investing in that vehicle. And going back to our conversations on lithium and cobalt, they differ greatly in this regard. In the case of lithium, you discussed that one can focus on the proper style of deposit in the proper jurisdiction, um, but then control substantial acreage based on uh, finding these large brine concentrations. And cobalt, on the other hand, is a byproduct. And while you can invest in companies purported to be primary cobalt deposits, uh, few, if any of them, would be sizable enough to make a global impact on the market. And for that reason, you've invested in Cobalt 27, which in instead controls above the ground cobalt and is now entering the streaming space. And with nickel, there are primary nickel deposits, so I want to get a feeling for how you see the best way to focus your investment dollars to take advantage of this. Uh, for me, uh, in the case of nickel, which um, which again is is perhaps the most capital intensive of all metals, i.e., it requires the most upfront capital to generate a a, a ton of uh, finished product production. I've really focused um, on uh, listed entities and um, in the sort of large cap, more liquid uh, names, I've, I've focused and in fact bought um, Norilsk Nickel. Um, so for those of your listeners that prefer to to stick with uh, large cap liquid names, I, I would strongly urge them to look at Norilsk Nickel, it is the second largest um, nickel producer in the world. It produces mostly um, class one nickel. Um, it's, it also produces copper and PGMs, but nickel is, is amongst its most important products. And I, I think it offers um, good exposure to a rising nickel price. Um, for those of your listeners um, who prefer to um, to invest in in some racier, smaller cap names that offer much much greater upside um, potential, I, I focused on two. The first is uh, a small cap company called Giga Metals, which is uh, listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It has a a market cap of about 20 million Canadian dollars and happens to own the second largest undeveloped nickel sulfide uh, deposit in the world and I think it's a completely mispriced name. In the last um, nickel sort of full price cycle when nickel hit its recent high of 50000 plus dollars a ton back in 2007, this company had a market cap of of something on the order of $200 million but then when nickel prices collapsed and they've been pretty beaten up the last uh, eight or nine years. It, it collapsed along with the the underlying nickel price. But there's no doubt in my mind, given the massive size of its resource, which happens to be located in a good, safe jurisdiction of British Columbia, that it offers investors a, a massively leveraged exposure to a rising nickel price. And similarly, there's another uh, small cap, which... Um, has caught my interest, and I'm also an investor in it. It's called Mustang Minerals. It has even a smaller market cap of just 10 million Canadian dollars. It owns an advanced um, nickel copper um, sulfide deposit in Manitoba. And again, while its underlying deposit is not as large as as that of Giga Metals, it's uh, compared to its market cap. It's it offers investors an outsized um, exposure to a rising nickel price. So as as long as um, I think the underlying thesis is correct, and that is that as we move into 019, we're going to see um, uh, significantly increased nickel price in response to sh shortages that develop uh, driven by uh, battery demand and electric vehicles for new um, class one nickel units. I think you'll see 
um, all of these nickel names um, start to respond disproportionately um, and and uh, again, my favorites in the large cap category are Norilsk Nickel, and in the in the small cap categories are th- the two I mentioned, which are Giga Metals and Mustang Minerals. Excellent. Well, Mike, let's end with possible price appreciation here, looking out into the future. Lithium, of course, has already experienced serious upward movement in reaction to the EV narrative, and cobalt, you've said, could go to as high as a hundred or maybe even $200 per pound. What's your feeling on nickel, a metal that was priced as high as $25, but is now trading around five? I, I think um, in order to incentivize industry to um, invest in new uh, nickel productive capacity, uh, they will have to see a nickel price well in excess of twenty thousand dollars a ton that compares with today's nickel price of eleven to twelve thousand dollars a ton and I think until such time um, as um, the nickel price rises um, to those sort of levels you won't see any new capacity coming on stream and so I think what will happen is as we as we go into 2019 and the above ground stocks of nickel um, get depleted, I think you'll see a a rather dramatic um, increase in nickel price to well above 20,000 and perhaps even more. Your listeners may recall that in the last sort of shortages uh, back that developed back in 2007, nickel price went um, to in excess of fifty thousand dollars a ton, and I, I would not be surprised as we move into 2020, 2021, as electric vehicle penetration rates um, increase and demand for nickel soars. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we exceed those levels because without those sort of price levels, um, the industry is not going to invest in the capacity that's required to deliver the incremental nickel units. And so I think it's an interesting story. I think listeners have time to get positioned because it's it's not going to be an 018 sort of um, event. There may be some creeping up of the price in 018, but I think as we move into 019, it's, it's then that um, we'll see some dramatic moves in nickel price. But as long as you're patient with your capital, it never hurts to um, get positioned um, sooner. That's what I've done. Um, And I don't mind having bought exposure in some of these names to sticking them in my bottom drawer and just waiting for the thesis to develop. Excellent. Well, Mike, as always, thank you for coming on the program. I know we had discussed possibly extending this into a fourth episode based around copper, which you have identified as another metal that should see serious benefit from the evolution of EVs and the infrastructure behind it. So hopefully sometime in the new year, we can jump into that discussion as well. Have a great holiday season and we'll catch back up with you in January. Merry Christmas, Colin. Look forward to speaking to you as we go into next year. Thank you. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, It could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?